got Gabe's bike in the shop. About to do a full service on it. Tubeless tires, new brakes, bleeding, greasing everything, tuning it up basically. So let me give you guys a little breakdown of Gabe's bike. It's a YT Capra 2021 size medium. It's got 29 inch wheels front and rear, rock shocks, super deluxe rear shock. He's got some rock shocks Zeb forks. I think he's rocking like 180 millimeters of travel up front and 170 in the rear. Rental bars, carbon bars, rental stem, SRAM code R brakes, SRAM dub bottom bracket, SRAM sprocket, Crank Brothers flat pedals. He's had this bike for two years now and it's been amazing for him. He says he loves it. This dude's rear brakes were done. Had nothing helping him out in the back. <laughs> His front brakes probably aren't gonna be as bad as the back. Oh, it looks like he has some rim tape already. Tubeless ready, hell yeah. These are still good though. I'll probably give it to him so he can save them. He has a rim strip on these wheels. It says tubeless ready by DT Swiss. Gotta throw in some fresh valves for the tubeless setup. Maxxis, DHR 29 by 2.60 going in the rear. Got some cream. I spent like 15 minutes trying to do it by hand, but I couldn't get it. There we go. Whew. Dude, even with a compressor, seating these tires is a lot of work. Well, I'm not a big fan. I mean, they feel good on a trail, but just installing them is my least favorite part about them. One down, one to go. But I'm gonna come back to working on this. It's getting late, I got work tomorrow, so I'm gonna do this in sections. So if you see me in different clothes, it's because I'm not doing it all in one day. So I'm gonna clean everything up, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Break the B, break the B. You wanna be in the in the video? She's gonna be famous. Success. The wheel runs pretty straight already. I just want to give each spoke like half a turn just to make everything snug. Good enough. Alright. I think wheels are good to go. Man, that sucker was on there. My strategy for the frame bolts is to do one at a time so that way I don't lose the pieces. I can you know, service it, grease it up, put it back, and then move on to the next one. Do the same to the other side. And check these bolts. We got Gabe some new brake pads for front and rear. But this back end is pretty much solid. We're gonna move up forward, start working on the bottom bracket and all this area. <laughs> Actually, it's getting late. It's about to be 10 p.m. I'm gonna save this for another day. I still gotta shower, get ready for bed, so see you guys another day. You know, despite him not servicing his bike for like a year and a half, it looks in pretty good shape. Like, it doesn't look as bad as I thought it was gonna look.
So this piece is actually needed. It's like a built-in crank puller. Ta-da. Look at how sick this looks. That back end just puts in work. Taking off this shock is way easier than taking off the shock on my, my on my clash. I'm not gonna service the shock because one, I don't have the tools for it and I'm not that good at it either. So I told Gabe, either take it in to get service or get a new shock, like a coil. I've been trying to tell him to get a coil on this thing, but we'll see when he pulls the trigger. Fork's coming off. Rocking like 90 in the front. There we go. Dude, these forks are way easier to service than <laughs> my forks. It's crazy too because they're both rock shocks. But Obviously the Zeb is the higher end model of their forks. Oh, that was money. There's one. There's two. We got the bottom seals. and the oil. Ooh. This guy. I always remove this coil top so I don't damage it. I did that once when I first serviced my own forks and I was so mad. I like these forks too because the stanchions are so beefy. I think these are 38 millimeters and I'm rocking 35. Got them in. Took a little bit of struggling, but got it. All right, 
Now we can put these coils back. There we go. Let me Google how much oil this fork needs because it's not the same as mine. So each side is taking 20 milliliters. Too much. Whoops. Forks are done. Everything's pretty loosely put. I gotta snug everything after I bring the bike down. Last thing I really gotta do is bleed the brakes, put on the chain, make sure everything's good. Fresh pads, fresh fluid. I ended up just uh, putting in the new brake pads and pushing back the, the pistons and Brakes feel really good. So I don't think I'm gonna bleed them. I'm a little too tired for that, but I think Gabe will be cool with it. They feel good and that's the most important part. We'll come back to this. I still gotta clean up and get ready for bed. Dude, after like two weeks of just working on this bike, after work and like on the weekends it's finally ready we swapped out the rear tire he's now tubeless front and rear put sealant added new valves did a lower leg service greased up the frame bolts greased up the headset added new brake pads i think gabe will be stoked once he gets his bike back it's gonna feel a lot different and to be honest doing this whole service i was really impressed with how easy YT bikes are to work on. Like all the bolts and everything were very straightforward. The, the design of it is very maintenance friendly. If you need to remove bolts or remove parts, they don't make it very complicated to do so. It's pretty similar to my common sole. I feel like servicing my bike and this bike go hand in hand. So it wouldn't be a proper service if I didn't go out and test ride this, this thing. And Gabe gave me the green light to go ride this wherever and whenever. So hopefully after you guys see this video, the next video that will be coming out, I'll be on this thing. But yeah, dude, I'm stoked I was able to help Gabe out, get his bike dialed, get it fresh and ready for all the trails we're about to hit this summer. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.